Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later in the program, we'll be talking about Republicans trying to outreach to Hispanics. Good luck, boys. But first, it just doesn't go away. We got to put a train to the mountains. We just got to do it. My old friend, Miller Hudson, and I do mean old, by the way. Miller, good to see you again. Good to see you, John. All right. Now, you and I have been you know, at this so many years. That's right. Um, that, that I don't know how you got scammed into this, but, but you've been trying to get, to get a magical train that goes over the mountains up to Vail, I think it was. Right, Eagle County Eagle Airport. County, all the way up. And it was going to be a new special train that's actually driven by unicorns and rides on top of a rainbow. And in 19, excuse me, 2001, the voters said, no, we don't even want to test this theory, but, right. but you're back. But we're back. But like, like, my, like my agita, you're back. <laughs> that's true. And uh, uh, since that time, uh, we have completed, we meaning CDOT, um, their uh, programmatic environmental impact statement on I-70. Uh, and for the fourth time in the last 15 years, and after spending $50 million of taxpayer money in studies, we got a recommendation again that said if you really want to solve the congestion in a quarter, you're going to have to put some kind of an advanced guideway technology in there. Yeah. I've had, I've had my set of experiences with the MIS, PEIS, <laughs> other known right. uh, croc studies of how we're going to do these things. It's my, been my uh, experience, particularly at RTD and others, that these things are pretty well predetermined beforehand. That's how we, we come up with such craptacular things as fast tracks uh, that, <laughs> that even, even if it came in on budget and on time, even if it did what it said it would do, would not impact traffic one iota, except to suck out 4.7 billion and now over seven billion dollars out of money we could use for road improvements. So let's let's talk a little bit about the corridor. It is right. a, a unique corridor. Yeah. I'll, unique I'll problem. It is a unique problem. We've got we've got this two lane in each direction highway goes up to the up to the Eisenhower Tunnel. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to bore another hole through that that mountain. I think. Would you agree? Yeah, but the question is, what are you going to put in that new bore? Is it going to be more lanes or is it going to be a transit alternative? It's going to be more lanes because when we go up to the mountains, we don't, we don't bring a briefcase. We bring suitcases and skis and grocery bags and baby cribs and all sorts of other things you don't want to put on, put on a bus. That's true, and, and, and buses won't work either. I would agree with you on that. But um, the, the, the real problem in the corridor, and it, it, it's counterintuitive, and unless you sit down and start looking at what's actually taking place there, you don't realize. During those peak periods of demand on the weekends, uh, the average occupancy in the vehicles is already at 3.2. So that means that more than half the vehicles have four people in them. So they're full, the vehicles that are, that are, that are on their way up. The spike in demand on Saturday morning is between 400 and 600 percent of the roadway capacity. So you can add two lanes, highways now 50 percent bigger, you get a larger, fatter parking lot rather than a long extended parking lot and, and it doesn't do anything to improve times. So in order to shave that peak off you have to have some kind of a flexible uh, traffic system that will allow you to suddenly expand the capacity of, of the corridor and the only way to do that is with transit and, and even though a lot of people don't like it this is the fourth time uh, that it's been studied and it's a fourth time that they've said it's got to be transit and not always you know during the the Owens years they weren't very happy with those recommendations yeah I wasn't happy with those recommendations I remember back in 2001 you tried to get some money for for a maglev and I, I kind of said the same thing that I'll say now, which is Colorado just seems to attract uh, <laughs> the, the ideas for coming up with new technologies that have never really been tried, but kind of sort of someplace else, because we're the guys to do it. In the 70s, it was personal rapid transit. We were all going to get into these little cars, press a button, and it, it would, like the Jetsons, bring you over to the spot you right, wanted. The, the horizontal elevator. Horizontal elevator. And then, <laughs> then, of course, in the 1990s, we need a baggage system at DIA. It's going to be the first of its kind. It's all going to be computerized, uh, and so people won't have to handle the bags and 
what turned out to be was a baggage shredder, which caused a two-year delay, and then finally we had to give it up. And then, and then we need something, a uh, train that is mag, that has magnets that will fly it over the, over the, um, over the mountains. Let me, let me ask. Uh, let's. I want to yeah. go on this two parts. One, tell me, convince me that the technology is even possible, uh, because I haven't seen it anywhere. And number two. Let's go ahead and play the magic wand game and say, great, it's working. I don't see it changing traffic sizably. So let's go okay. with, with the first one. Well, tell well, tell well, me how this works. Yeah, let, let's start with the, the technology. 12 years ago, when, when we had this debate, um, I think it was fair to say that a lot of these advanced technologies were basically blackboard exercises. They had not been constructed, they were not in operation, nobody knew how well they would work. Uh, we now have three systems internationally that use maglev uh, technology. There's the German uh, TransRapid, and it's in service in China uh, between the airport and downtown Shanghai. Um, gets up to 280 miles an hour, and you can make this 35 mile trip in something like 11 minutes. Um, uh, the Japanese have a, a version uh, that's under construction, and they have now committed to build 300 more miles of it um, uh, north to south on the main island. And uh, the Koreans are in the process of deploying a system that's actually under construction in Incheon. So I would say that the technology is now there. All right, so what I'm hearing is 12 years ago when I tried to con you guys into this, it was complete BS, and I know that, I can say that now, but back then when mm -hmm. I said, no, they're doing this in Germany, and you gave mm -hmm. us some other examples, yeah. but so this time I'm supposed to believe that, it, that it's really working. Where is it going over uh, grades as high as what you would take to go through the Rockies, up and down like a roller coaster through, through the Rockies? It doesn't exist in any place that goes up those steep hills yet, does it? Um, I, I don't know the what the Korean system. The the two systems that are operating right now. By the, by the way, that Korean system mm -hmm. is actually the North Korean system. It's it's just a <laughs> catapult that they right. use to yeah. fling people. <laughs> uh, so so there's I, I I don't know the the Japanese system is a relatively flat system and it's also a lower speed system. But you can do the measurements on, on essentially the torque you can get out of these magnetic motors, they won't have any trouble pulling the seven to eight percent grades that we have in the I-70 quarter. And I got a, you know, that, what was it, uh, vacation when they, oh, this is the car you want, it'll do this. Yeah. Right, let, let's, I don't believe you. I didn't believe you 12 years ago when you said it's possible and it's going to be easy. I don't believe you now, but let's just say that I do believe right. you, all right? Let's say that, that the unicorns yeah. come and pick up the, 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 the trains and they go up, up to, up to Vail. We're building something for recreational skiers, weekend warriors. And when you take a look at the transportation needs throughout Colorado, well, you know, North I-25 out of downtown is something that has that type of congestion problem, not once a week, but every single day of the week. Right. You know, so we're, we're talking about putting billions of dollars into something so that yuppies can go skiing in Vail and not have to worry about parking. As a guy who has a couple little kids, when I go up to the mountains, I need the van, I need the truck, I need the mm -hmm. car, I need something up there because I'm bringing a lot more than just just my, my ski poles. I'm not a college kid anymore. Um, so talk to me a little bit about this. What's gonna convince me to get out of the car? Even, why don't I just go a day earlier, stay a day later? And I also wanna talk about some of the other uh, congestion pricing solutions. Right. Well, well if, if, if you have that kind of flexibility, I mean, I only ski on weekdays any longer myself. I mean, if. Kid. I haven't skied in 10 years. <laughs> well, if, if they come in from out of town yeah. and they're staying with me, I'll go up on Saturday yeah. morning, but it's 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> departure, you know, kind of thing. So we all know what the, what, 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 what the problem is. And there is, is no real way there to estimate, but I would also suggest that this thing would get a lot of weekday usage if it was there. And you could start Maybe, but we don't, who cares? Yeah. Because we don't need it on the weekdays. Right, but yeah. um, the, 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 there's, there, there's a whole bunch of issues around the fact that recreational use of our mountain resorts is our second largest industry, and, and in the winter months, it is our largest employer. We're gonna strangle that entire 
industry if we don't address the access issue. Now, I would agree that you know, people in Durango, people in Julesburg aren't interested in solving the I-70 problem. That's what we learned when we went to the ballot in 2001. And there's going to have to be a public-private partnership where people step up like they just did on the I-225 uh, connection um, to the Peoria station so that uh, there will be light rail access to the, the air train out to, to DIA. Um, and, and, and it's going to require a significant private sector contribution, 40 to 50 percent probably of the capital cost of the system. I hope it's not 40, 50 percent. I hope it's all of it. If Vail Associates wants a choo-choo train going up there, they ought to pay for it. They're the ones that will be getting, getting the benefit. But again, talk, talk to me a little bit about how it's going to get people out of their cars. You really think that people are going to pack up for the weekend? I, I can see somebody taking a day trip up to, to ski, and if this magically works, yeah, bring their skis, uh, bring them a knapsack, mm -hmm. and off they go, and they, they come back. Terrific. But for those people who, who are going there for the weekend, going, going for recreation, they still need their car when they get up there. A lot of people don't, particularly in the winter. I mean, it's a it's a destination. Your car sits in a parking lot all day long while you ski. Uh, there's going to have to be something done in the in the summer to provide local distribution. There's no that last mile, as they talk about it, after you come off the train to get people to uh, trailheads, to bike trails, and 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 the kinds of activities that they want to partake of. But there is no joy in having to drive up and being stuck in a five or six hour uh, jam to get 100 miles. If, if, if we can move you up there in an hour, you, it, it would be cheaper to rent the bike when you get there than to take the bike with you. Are you worried that you're going to be spending all this money for recreational traffic? I mean, that, what mm -hmm. is this going to cost? Probably six to eight billion dollars, which sounds like a huge number until you look at what it costs to six lane that highway. That is now at nine and a half billion dollars. There's no money to widen the highway either. Yes, but we know what happens whenever there's steel tracks. The costs escalate and uh, the ridership mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't this always is, match. This is not steel tracks. This, this is, not, is this magnetic different. tracks. <laughs> Unicorn yes. tracks. All right. That's right. Um, when. What about some of the other options? There are roads there. Some people have said, do congestion pricing, which mm -hmm. is the more congested it is, you pay a toll. The toll goes up to spread people's desire to, to go elsewhere. If it costs $20 to take it during uh, tops, top hours, and go, I'll go early, I'll go late, I'll, I'll ride for free. Why don't we just use congestion pricing and use the capacity that we have better? Well, that will probably work in the summer, and you already see some of that. Um, the, the ski areas you were talking about, who clearly would be a primary economic beneficiary of a system like this, are petrified that they're going to be, have to pay for it. But in the winter months, if you're paying 100 bucks for a lift ticket, you want to be there by 9 a.m. You don't want to leave before 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon because you've, you've got that investment in that, that recreational window is daylight. I'm starting to feel the same way I felt about getting conned into light rail when I found out that the real users are guys in Highlands Ranch who just don't want to pay parking when they go to a rocks game. That's not why we put money into public public infrastructure. All right, last question. Right. What's the next step here? You, you this the, has been the, this has been a passion of yours for a right. long time. What's the, the next step? Next step, uh, CDOT has the feasibility study underway. In uh, December, they ruled there is uh, technology available. By September, they're going to make a decision about whether or not it is financially feasible to, to construct a system like this. So there will be an RFP coming out next month in April, uh, and those of us that are interested in getting this done had better dream up some financing schemes for the system. Why do I have a feeling it's going to be my wallet and your dreams? Miller, always a good time. <laughs> Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. <laughs>